This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We don't have massive slates in either the NBA or the NHL for tonight, but you combine them together, you get one kind of decent slate. So what that's what we're going to do here today is break down both the NBA and NHL, having Austin Swayman to break down his thoughts on player props, traditional market bets, and much more to get you ready across both sports for tonight. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, joined here as many Mentioned by Austin Swain. Check him out on Twitter at a Swain3. You can find his work over at numberfire.com. Austin, happy Monday to you. How are you doing today? I am doing great. We got some coffee in on Monday morning and I'm feeling good. Yeah, I always feel bad because it is 7.30 your time when we're recording here. It is 9.30 my time, so I've been up for a while. Uh, and you have had to jump right out of bed at 7.30 to talk to us. So let me extend my appreciation from the audience to you, but also my congratulations on your uh, Fantasy Sports Writers Association Award win last week for the best football article. For people who did not read it yet, uh, what was that article on that you won the award for? Uh, so that particular article that I submitted, I was uh, shocked and humbled, by the way, for by the award, by the great people at the Fantasy Sports Writers Association. Um, I actually wrote a uh, Justin Jefferson last uh, fall, potentially breaking the receiving yards record. Obviously, he didn't end up doing that. But um, just a general musing that I had right about Jefferson and the type of offense he had entering last season versus the new one that we saw him in. And obviously, right. he caught pl- plenty of balls for plenty of yards and several touchdowns in the fantasy landscape there. So I, I think I was a little bit fortunate by the result, but it was just kind of looking at their difference in projected pass rate and kind of just evaluating what some of those milestones might mean in fantasy football. So I thought it was a cool little encompassing piece. I was stunned, as I said, uh, to end up winning the award, given all the great work in the fantasy football community and yeah. all the great writers out there. But uh, I appreciate you giving me those kinds of words about that. And it's been, it's been a great week for sure kind of victimized by the luck the Vikings had because if they had been in like a less important game. Like if they yeah. didn't have to rest up for the playoffs, they might've let them go for the record right. in the final week. Uh, it didn't happen that way, but you know, in another, another universe where the Vikings weren't 83 and one in one score games, maybe <laughs> would have gotten Justin Jefferson across that uh, yardage or that yardage mark. Well, congrats yeah. to you, Austin. Uh, pleasure to have you on here for today. We'll get your thoughts on the NBA and NHL here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast. Big week ahead. We have Brandon Gadula back on the show tomorrow to talk about uh, some golf. We'll have Ed Fang back with us on Wednesday talking college basketball. It is also speed week. We got Formula One coming up from Bahrain. I'll be talking about that on Thursday. We'll talk some NASCAR in Vegas with they have trucks, Xfinity and Cup all there. All that coming up this week on Covering the Spread. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear. Leave us a rating and review as well. FanDuel is America's number one sports book and the number one place to get your friends into the game. That's why FanDuel is inviting or giving you and a friend the opportunity to earn $75 each. All you need to do is invite your friends using your exclusive referral link under the refer icon in the app. As soon as your friend makes any bet of at least $10 on Sportsbook, you'll both get $50 in Sportsbook bonus bets. And as soon as they bet at least $10 on FanDuel Casino, you'll both get $25 in casino credit. Head over to FanDuel Sportsbook and Casino Apps and invite your friends today and get your $75 in referral bonus. Must be 21 plus and present in Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, or West Virginia. Referred players must wager $10 plus within 30 days after signing up. Limit five referrals during a 30-day period. Sportsbook bonus bets and casino site credit are non-withdrawable and expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan, 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Let's start things off in the NBA here, Austin. And we've got a couple of games post-All-Star break for most teams now. And it is kind of an inflection point because teams gearing up for the postseason they've had time to rest up so when you're looking at the nba landscape the past couple of days what's changed for you any surprises uh, whether it be on the team level or player level thus far 
So I, I don't think there's a, a larger story in basketball, maybe even sports right now, than the new look Los Angeles Lakers. We have not seen Kevin Durant on the Suns yet. Obviously, that's going to be a huge story with huge championship implications in the NBA. The East clearly a three-team race. And frankly, yesterday's Lakers-Mavericks game in the afternoon on Sunday was the tiebreaker for who I was going to talk about here. But the <laughs> Lakers rallied from 27 points down. They ended up coming from behind to beat Dallas. And I think that's why Los Angeles is a little bit more of a serious contender because of their defense. And when you look at this stretch where they've had LeBron, Anthony Davis, and these all new pieces on the floor, 104.2 defensive rating, fourth best in the NBA, plus 11.4 net rating, also fourth best in the NBA. And I, I think Russell Westbrook was a little maligned about, you know, being the problem with the Lakers. Really, the problem was how much they gave up to give him and how much they were paying him. When you look at how now they've gotten some talent back in the stable. They got an elite shooter with Malik Beasley. They got a one to five defender with Jared Vanderbilt and D'Angelo Russell has even sprained his ankle and he's not even playing in the Lakers look like this. So I think that's the biggest story in the league and the biggest trend that I'm following and watching is now the Lakers are coming from the 12th, 13th seed, whatever they are to potentially working their way in through the play in. And then there is an earth shattering upset brewing here, whether it be the number two Grizzlies or the number one nuggets, like this team with championship pedigree all of a sudden has quality parts and pieces and that is something to me that could drastically change the title output outlook in the nba so what's their ceiling to you do you think they are like legit contenders because right now over at FanDuel sportsbook their nba finals odds 42 to 1 that could be ambitious they're 42 to 1 for a reason but what's their ceiling in your mind so it, you know, I would it surprise me at all if if LeBron Anthony Davis and these new pieces won the title? No, because we've seen the championship pedigree less yeah. than three or four years ago. Obviously, the forty two to one odds I think are reflective of their path in that they would have to get through the play in. So that's one obstacle in order to get in the dance. Then they'll have a tough matchup with either the one or two seed as I project, and then they'll have be at a home court disadvantage moving forward if they somehow get through one of those tough teams. So the hole might be too deep. But yeah. to me, the question is, can the Lakers play spoiler? Can they knock some of these other teams out of the play? And we talked last week about the Kings or potentially the Clippers in that kind of seven, six, seven, eight range. Or can they actually pull the grand upset of one of the two guys that have paced the Western Conference all year? So as a team, I don't know if the Lakers have Western Conference championship winning upside, but they are a story that I'm watching as far as tracking some of the other contenders uh, in that conference. So the Lakers right now plus 146 to make the playoffs. That counts after the play in the play in tournament. Do you think that's a fair number? Is that one you're buying into based on their path there? Or is even is that kind of your preferred market for betting and buying into this market? Or is there more single game stuff you're looking into? A absolutely, because I think plus 146 is more than a fair number, because if you really break it down, say you're a full believer in the Warriors who were last year's champions, if you just give them a one of the other spots by de facto, you're looking at the Lakers getting past the Utah Jazz, the Oklahoma City Thunder, the Portland Trailblazers and the Minnesota Timberwolves. This new new look Lakers squad is superior to them analytically and with the eye test than all four of them. So they do have ground to make up. They would have to go through a one game sample, which is anybody's business. You're going to talk to Ed Fang on Wednesday about college basketball and one game samples in the tournament and how wild that can be. But you, know, I still think that is good value on the Lakers for a team that really, by net rating, one of the better teams in their conference since they got these new pieces. And I'll, I'll keep watching to see how it unfolds. Um, a, a, the LeBron actually ended up spraining his ankle yesterday. So, yeah. um, you know, that's something to monitor. Obviously, his availability would would impact things. That might be the reason, by the way, that number is so distant is because we don't know about LeBron's ankle now moving forward after another sprain. But I still feel very confident in this new look team and the pieces. And I feel like they're much more so a contender than those other teams I mentioned in the play in area. Well, we'll connect LeBron with Patrick Mahomes' trainer to get that ankle cured up uh, yes. right away. Yes. Okay, let's talk about this four-game slate in the NBA for tonight, Austin. Let's start things off with the more traditional market spreads, money lines, totals, stuff like that. When you look at across these four games, where are you seeing value there at FanDuel Sportsbook? So the first thing that I saw that that provided immediate value was uh, Pistons Hornets, which I'm sure is the marquee game everybody wanted to watch tonight. <laughs> but uh, these two teams have played twice this year, Detroit averaging 129 and a half points, Charlotte averaging 123 points in their matchup. And they are both, I would say, defensively challenged. And the sample is fair there. Both uh, games had LaMelo Ball, did not have Cade Cunningham. So it wasn't thrown off by injuries or anything like that. Detroit has struggled on defense all year, bottom three defensive rating for the whole season. And 
and eighth worst since January 1st. And the thing about the Hornets, that's kind of been surprising to me. I I've been a seller of the Hornets for a while, but they're actually mid back in defensive rating or so since the beginning of the year. The question is, I mean, I mean, the thing is that Charlotte plays so fast. They are the top pace in the NBA by a mile since the calendar turned. They play so fast, so they are almost a shoe in for a 230-point total anytime we see them. Um, I I think that this total is being suppressed because these two teams met earlier this month. They only scored 230 total points, but just 34.8% three-point shooting in that one for two of the worst three-point defenses in the league. So I feel like the over is a good bet here, despite the fact the Hornets missing P.J. Washington. I actually think he makes more a difference for them on the defensive end versus the offensive end. So I like the over in Hornets Pistons tonight, first and foremost. Yeah, that one's currently at 235. Over is minus 110 at FanDuel Sportsbook spread. Is the Hornets minus six there? Uh, 235, the number in that one. Anything else to see on the traditional market side, Austin? So I think the most intriguing game of these four is the the Celtics and Knicks in New York. And I actually like the Knicks plus two here. Uh, and so does number fires model. It actually thinks the Knicks are about 53% to win this game outright, even though the Celtics have the vaunted record. They are one of the teams that are better than the Lakers in this recent stretch here because Boston has been one of the title favorites all year. But keep in mind, no Jalen Brown here for the Celtics, and it is a last game of a three-game trip for them. The Knicks are playing unbelievable right now, as I'm sure you've probably heard out there in those East Coast markets, Jim. The Knicks are playing really well at the moment. Um, they are fourth in overall net rating uh, this month, which is not too far behind Boston. Uh, and I just wanted to give Julius Randle a shout. We talked about Jalen Brunson on the show last week for most improved player award, averaging nearly 30 a game since the calendar turned. Ju Julius Randle's efficiency has been his problem the whole career. Right now he has a 61.3% true shooting uh, in February. So like his shooting and efficiency has been his bugaboo. He's been making a ton of shots. So now the Knicks seem like an incredibly serious player out East in that weaker conference that they have Brunson. They have Randle, Randle scoring at a high level. I think with the healthier squad, here at home getting points that's a spot that i'm looking to the knicks tonight to to prevail just as our model does believe it will so the spread is plus two that's minus 110 at FanDuel sportsbook the money line in the knicks is plus one away you mentioned the number fire thinks the knicks win this game 53 yeah. percent. what about for you do you prefer to go with the spread plus two or the money line plus 108 implied odds uh plus 108 are 48 percent versus 52.4 percent at uh, minus 110 preference for you between those two markets I, I just I think I'll take the spread in this spot yeah, just because okay. I we do get the key number of two. When you look at as far as percentage or or amount of value on both lines, it's about the same because I mentioned it's about 53% for the Knicks to win versus 48 implied there, about a 5% buffer on the spread as well. I, I think I'd rather take the spread just because you sure. you do get that key number of two for, for a late possession, for a three free throw, whatever it might be. Um, there's really no difference in gap in value when you're looking at our stuff though. Okay, so Knicks plus two is where Austin is going there. The other one, as mentioned before, Pistons, Hornets over 235. What about in the player prop perspective, Austin? Uh, anybody you're keying in on for tonight? So I am going to turn to someone who uh, my buddy Tom Vecchio actually talked about on your show last week. A lot different matchup. He, he was talking about Joel Embiid against the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm going to talk about Joel Embiid against the Miami Heat. I love his under uh, points, rebounds, and assists. It's currently sitting at 47 and a half. Uh, minus 113 on FanDuel Sportsbook. Miami's arguably the toughest matchup in the league for a big. Uh, second fewest points allowed to centers, fewest rebounds allowed, second fewest assists allowed to centers. And we know Bam Adebayo is lurking there, and Joel did struggle with Bam last year in the postseason. Fewer than 20 points a game, fewer than 10 boards a game, fewer than two assists a game. And I, I know he was fighting injuries in that series, so it's not apples to apples and regular season certainly doesn't have the same intensities. But if you want an over on a points, rebound, assist combo bet, you generally want some pace. This is not that game. Philadelphia is 26th in overall pace. Miami's 28th in overall pace. Um, I think Embiid's been on a hot streak. That's why this number is so elevated. He's had yeah. Memphis high pace, Houston poor defense, um, Boston a little bit higher of a pace than this. But we have him just projected for 43.3 points, rebounds, and assists at number fire. Um, even I think that's a tad bit generous given the overall pace and, and, the, and the low total in this one. Yeah, 47 and a half is a massive number on the yeah. TRA for Joel Embiid. So points, rebounds, plus assists for Embiid, 47 and a half. Austin wants the under at minus 113 on that one. And I think the, the thought process there does make a lot of sense as far as taking the under on Embiid.
Okay, let's shift focus now and talk about the NHL. NHL is a five-game slate for tonight. Once again, Austin, let's start things off with the more traditional markets, looking at um, money lines, totals, things like that. Where are you seeing value on the NHL side of things for tonight? So I have a couple of unders that I really like on this card. Uh, the first one is, again, the, probably the less marquee showdown. I, I I don't know what it is about these bad games that attract me so much. But Detroit and the Ottawa Senators in Ottawa, I like the under 6.5 here. was sitting at minus 112 at FanDuel Sportsbook uh, when I last checked. This so total implies a bit of a shootout. This is a, this is an above average total, and, and I couldn't agree more, disagree more here because these two teams have allowed the eighth and thirteenth fewest goal expected goals per sixty minutes respectively since January first. So these are plus defenses. When you look at the skaters and both projected starting goalies here, uh, Ville Huso and Cam Talbot also top forty in goals saved above expectation. Neither of them are stellar, but they're serviceable. You know they they're not going to be a Swiss cheese uh, sitting in front of the crease letting letting goals in left and right that otherwise aren't very quality attempts, they're they're passable. So you look at number fires model, it sees this game with less than seven goals, 58.6% of the time. The implied here about 52.7%. So there is decent value on this game. Uh, that is still at uh, minus 112 on the under. You mentioned six and a half under minus 112 for the Red Wings and the Senators right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. You mentioned the other one is also a total, I believe. What one was that one? So I, I'm actually looking at the game of of the night, and by the way, the money line is trending here in a spot where Number Fires model likes it as well. Uh, the uh, Bruins and Oilers under six and a half here it was sitting at minus 102 when I saw it on Sportsbook, but I imagine there'll be more money flowing in on this game to to move the line around. The Bruins changing style to me is something that I've bet with success in recent days. Boston is early in this year. They were a juggernaut, complete defense, to top five offense. They were looking excellent. And now when you look in the stretch since the calendar turned, Boston is scoring the eighth fewest goals in the NHL. Eighth fewest expected goals, I should say. So they're not generating the same quality chances offensively. And Edmonton might be the better team here. Edmonton is a very scary team when you look at how they're performing analytically right now because they are allowing the uh, second fewest expected goals per 60 minutes, scoring the fourth most expected goals per 60 minutes and i've heard goals are good in hockey so edmonton <laughs> doing very well here on both sides of the ice and you look at the goaltending in this game it's also excellent when you turn back to the under uh linus olmark probably going to win the vezina trophy he's second uh in goal saved above expectation this year and Stuart skinner also top 15 in that mark so the under we have it about 56.5 percent to hit uh it was sitting at minus 102 so around even money uh for the implied so we're showing value there we're also showing on uh uh, value on Edmonton's money line at plus 116 here, likely for the same reasons that I talked about, where Edmonton, their offense is performing a lot better than Boston's recently. They're at home here, equal rest for both teams. Um, so I, our model slightly favors Edmonton, and you can get them at plus 116 on FanDuel Sportsbook. It sounds, based on the way you were speaking, though, as if you prefer the under, though, correct? I, I just, uh, I was able to fully deep dive the under yesterday. This line, <laughs> the money line actually moved in toward Edmonton spot where it was showing value. Okay. It was only showing a smidge yesterday, uh, okay. yesterday evening, but it is, I, it's kind of concerning to me that the line is moving toward Boston because that's money moving that line. And I'd want to see what's going on there. So my official recommendation would be the under, but I just thought I would mention if you're looking for another bet, our model does like the Oilers money line too. Yeah, under six and a half, minus one of six right now for the Bruins and the Oilers. The money line, as mentioned for the Oilers, is plus 116. So it could be a spot where you track uh, this one as it goes along. If it keeps on extending out, maybe you take Edmonton later on. It's never fun to bet into a market that has moved the other way, but sometimes it moves enough where that is a value as well, as you alluded to. Now, what do you think is the cause of the slipping for the Bruins? Because expected goals is something that's probably going to stabilize decently quickly. Yep. Not the smallest sample anymore either. Do you think this is a rut? Do you think this is something else? Um, what is your like read on why that's happening for them? So I I felt like Boston was significantly overperforming. It can it can be just a it can be just like a, a metric and a style. So expected goals are largely based on Corsi, which is the overall statistic of how many shot attempts are going mm -hmm. on goal in which situations for the NHL. Boston was significantly overperforming early in the year, so it's not surprising to me that they've hit a little bit of a rut, a little bit of a dry spell because they weren't going to score at a historic pace all season. When you look at their overall season marks, they're still like top eight in the league in the same category. That's 
that's the type of start they got off to. Really, I think a lot of what it has to do with is some of the early high danger chances David Pasternak got. He was flirting with a hat trick and multiple occasions to start the season. And now Boston's offense has just been very human, been very normal. And they're leaning into their strengths, which is their defense. They've had an elite defense all year. And if you have the guy that's in line to win the Vezina, you might slow down the pace a little bit, be will more willing to play in your own end uh, and be more accustomed to a style that'll work in the postseason versus rushing forward and with multiple attackers. Okay, so we are on the Oilers, uh, potentially the money line, depending on where that goes, but specifically yeah. the under here, six and a half at minus 106. Let's talk some player props now, because we do have, again, five games in the NHL for tonight. What do you see on the player prop side of things here? So I am incredibly underwhelming in this department compared to my buddy, Tommy props, who is a shot on goal. Machine. Tommy props. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you'll have to tell him I called him that because he, <laughs> he'll, he'll appreciate that. Our friend Ariel Epstein gave him that nickname and coined it first. So I like it. Okay. Um, I'm going, I'm going to go off the board with one of the games we haven't talked about yet. I'm going to go Canucks stars and I'm looking at Joe Pavelski to score a goal in this game. And I just look at a guy that's badly due for regression when it comes to shooting and obviously a talented player. He has 18 shots. Shots in February has not scored yet. Um, I think Dallas as a whole is due for a lot of regression offensively, given that they're only scoring 2.38 goals per game per 60 minutes, 3.18 expected goals. So they are supposed to be scoring more right now, a lot more than they have. They've been a little unlucky. You could point to Pavelski for that, given that he's had all of those shots and still hasn't found the back of the net this month. I think the Canucks are an excellent candidate for that type of regression. The implied to goal total sits here around 4.35. This one's not supposed to be very competitive. That's kind of why we didn't talk about it. Um, Colin Delia, the goaltender for the Canucks series, actually the best they've had all season. And he still sits at negative 2.55 goals saved above expectation. So we've got holes in the, in the crease and Pavelski do big time for regression. Um, I think he's in line for one soon. So I'm going to call my shot at plus 240 in this one. Yeah, down to two to the 235. So people are with you on this one, Let's Austin. Go. Uh sounds like uh maybe not not the best number anymore, but still uh there is confidence in Joe Pavelski. That is in the Stars Connects game. Pavelski plus 235 as of right now to score a goal. 235 is still okay to you, correct? I assume. Yep. Okay, perfect. Well, let's ride with Pavelski then, and let's ride with Austin Swaim across the NBA and the NHL for tonight. Austin, I appreciate the time. Uh, good luck to you for tonight. I'm sure we'll talk to you again here very soon on Covering the Spread once again. Sounds good, Jim. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Make sure you check out Austin on Twitter at aswain 3 You can find all of his writing work over at numberfire.com and on the Numberfire Daily Fantasy podcast feed as well. We'll talk to Austin again in the very near future to get his read on NBA and NHL as well. Before we close up for today, though, we got to go back to last week and talk about uh, the bets we talked about on the show here. Recap one down for PGA, EPL, and NASCAR as well. Our guest on the PGA side was Allie McCann of FanDuel TV. You can find her on Twitter at Ali. I'm a can preview in the Honda classic and Allie had three top 20 bets that she liked. Those three bets were Robbie Shelton at plus 260, Denny McCarthy plus 160, Johnny Vegas plus 150 and both Vegas and Shelton one shot off. They both finished tied 421st in this one. Um, we saw McCarthy miss the cut, but uh, Shelton was plus 260 Vegas plus 150 Vegas shot a 64 on Sunday. And that was why he made that run. He was in the wave that dealt with a lot of wind in the late group on Friday. He missed the, the wind on Thursday, too. So, you know, it goes both ways. But if he just had a little bit better Friday in that wind, maybe he would have had the top 20, but couldn't quite get there. So close misses for Alley on both Shelton and Vegas, but uh, definitely did at least give a run and fun to track Vegas on Sunday as he was trying to run that one down. Our guest on the EPL side was Austin Cass. Find him on Twitter at Austin Cass. He had two bets that he liked. One of those is Man City. He wanted them to win uh, with either the exact score of 3-0 three three at plus 750 or 2-0 at plus 550. And Man City went nuts right away in this game. They were 3-0 before halftime. They wound up winning 4-1. to one, uh, So just a little bit too, uh, too hot out the gate there for Man City to win that one. Uh, but... You know, the general sentiment of Man City winning that game pretty comfortably was there. Unfortunately, didn't get the bets, uh, but the the read on the overall game, correct. Other one was for James Madison of Leicester to be booked at 4-1. Uh, to one. No cards overall for Leicester in this game. Uh, so that one was missed. Uh, Arsenal won that game 1-0. Not quite as much of an offensive assault as projected there, but uh, four to one on that one. Couldn't quite get there either. So close on both those for Austin, but not quite hitting for any of those, uh, but still 
Austin a good follow on Twitter again at Austin Cast. Find his EPL work over at numberfire.com as well. Happening him back on again Friday. Talk more EPL for this week. Finally, I was talking some NASCAR last week in Fontana. The outright was Eric Jones, 28 to 1. I had Toyota to win a 2 to 1. Daniel Suarez T10 at plus 270. And Michael McDowell T10 at plus 650. The one that did hit here was Suarez plus 270. I should have been more aggressive with him, honestly, because he had a really good car. Finished fourth. And even that, I think, undersells him a bit because he had a, I believe it was a pit road speeding penalty, went to the back, worked his way back forward. Uh, he wasn't as fast as Kyle Busch, wasn't as fast as his teammate Ross Chastain, but he was really good. Uh, so maybe he should have been more aggressive with Suarez. My model did show value in his outright market. Luckily, he didn't bet that uh, because that would have been a loss, but he was really good. Uh, McDowell almost luck box his way into a top 10. He used some strategy to finish better than he should have. His car was not fast. Um, but you know, that's kind of how things can work at these spots is you can luck box your way into stuff. If you're willing to be different and they were willing to be different, just didn't quite hit there. Toyota two to one, probably the best shot was, uh, Denny Hamlin, but he, I think realized he didn't have the best car. So got us schedule strategy in the last run. Didn't quite get there. Eric Jones, 28 to one. Didn't have the same speed as I thought he would have. Uh, disappointing week there. Did work his way in the top 10 at one point, but uh, not super, super fast there. So the Swans hit at 270 was nice, but um, Kyle Busch, dominant for sure. On the Xfinity side, we talked about the the uh, the college cars. I liked or showing value in Austin Dillon, 17 to one. Daniel Hemrick, 28. And Chandler Smith at 75 to one. And Chandler Smith gave it a run. So did Dylan uh, to an extent. He got some damage that kind of hurt his car quite a bit, wound up finishing seventh. But Chandler Smith finished fourth. So I had a top five bet on him and a group bet on him. Both those wound up hitting the top five was plus 950, which was good and kind of helped make up for a not super thrilling uh, Cup Series race for me. So Chandler Smith, that paid off pretty well. Was pretty happy about that and happy with why the model was into colleague. Uh, I know that Hemrick wasn't as fast, but Smith being up there, I think is predictable based on his talent. I thought that he, I think he's a pretty good race car driver with a decent enough team that underperformed relative to expectations last year, but I think is due for a bounce back this year. And they'll have Kyle Busch in their car at Vegas this weekend. So that's going to be a ride as well. But uh, the Chandler Smith top five bet did hit at 950, the group bet too, uh, but the outright here on the show, 750 or 75 to one did shorten to 50 to one. So good closing line value there but no win on that. So we'll see. Uh, bounce back uh, with Las Vegas this week. But again, as mentioned, Formula One in Bahrain as well. I'm going to talk about F1 and NASCAR on Thursday's show. If if FanDuel releases top 10 bets again on Thursday night, as it did last week, I'll talk about T10 bets on the Friday show as well. So potentially Thursday and Friday, depending on how things go down, but we'll have some NASCAR and F1 coming up on Thursday. That's all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Tomorrow, Brandon Gadula is back talking about some PGA. We'll also talk some NBA with Brandon. Get his read on both those to get you set for this week in the PGA. Big thank you once again to Austin Swaim. Find him on Twitter at aswaim3. Find his work over at numberfire.com. Congrats once again to Austin on his award win this past week. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your NBA and NHL bets for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. Talk some golf and some basketball. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 